Hey guys, this is Eric18989 here, and we're going to look at the 121B. It's 5% worth it. So this video is really about the entire crates. I don't want to call it an event because it's just crates in the thing, and it's also a guide on the 121B tier 10 medium tank. So uh, there's three battles to show you guys. We have two first class and then an ace. I'm going to start off talking about the crates, if they're worth it or not, and then I'm going to really start talking about move into talking about the tank and having a little guide on the 121 itself. So this is far and away the most expensive uh, event that Wargaming has really ever done, at least out in out, out front like this. Like They've actually disclosed the 5% chance of getting the tank per opening of a crate, all right? So hats off to them there. Thank you for at least doing that, right? You got, I mean, listen, guys, uh, I don't know if anybody that's, we might be mad about that it's only 5%, but uh, I don't, I haven't seen anybody so far yet mad that they actually told what percent uh, the tank drop rate is. So I'm very happy about that. Now, I'm just going to let you know right now, I purposely did not record it, uh, me opening the crates, nor am I going to tell anybody how many crates I opened or anything. And this is the reason why is because we already know the drop rate, guys. The drop rate is 5%, okay? There's people on the forum, hey, I got it first try. Oh, well, I believe you, congratulations, but you were in that 5%. So I, I don't I didn't want to put video up of me if I got it right away. People are like, whoa, because it's almost going to distort that picture. And likewise, I didn't want to put a video up if it took me a super ton of money um, in order to do it. Because likewise, I didn't want to for that 5% to seem like 0% because we already know the drop rate. So I think that in events like this and in occasions like this, when we already know the drop rate, if you hear these stories about, listen, there's going to be lucky people that get it earlier. There's going to be unlucky people, but the tank drop rate is still 5%, guys. So that's why I didn't include the crate opening in here. We already know the drop rate. It's 5%. You can do the math and figure out if the money is worth it. Quite frankly, uh, I, I don't, I don't at all. I think it's about 5% worth it. Now, if something is 100% worth it, I would recommend it. If it's uh, 0%, I wouldn't be caught dead. I'm, I'm ranking this at 5%. That's, that's not very high. I, I don't think it's, it's really worth the price at all for this, these crates. So uh, I really wouldn't recommend anybody doing it. Um, now, why did I? Well, a couple reasons. The main reason, honestly, is for the channel, for you guys. I wanted to get a good guide out on here for this thing for you guys because I don't want anybody else, uh, you know, saying, yes, it's worth it. I got mine super early. Listen, guys, it's a 5% chance no matter what. doesn't matter who got, got it early, got it late, whatever. It's a 5% chance. The other thing is it's way too much money. It's just way too much money, guys. Uh, spend your money on it. You listen, guys, get a tech treat premium there are way better tech tree premiums in this tier for tier but this is can be a, a fun tank though so that tells you what i think of the crates i don't think they're worth it they're about five percent worth it but um the tank itself how is it well there's some pros and cons to the tank the pros are it is a tier 10 enriched tank now when i say enriched it does not have enriched credit earnings uh, they call it enriched because it's you know it, it has the gold logo and everything it looks like a premium but they don't call it a premium they call it enriched which i think is a little bit misleading because as you saw the credits are pathetic the, the, the you guys this is not a credit grinder uh, the KPF PZ70 or MBT70 in tier 9 is very underpowered. However, at least that is actually enriched with the credit earning. This is not. Look at that. 6,000 damn it or 6,000 bring home for a first class. I didn't do anything spectacular there spending credits. I, I mean, yeah, I have the thing maxed out, but you should always run your tanks maxed out there. So... So that's a pro, but it's also a con. That's something bad about it, but also good about it. The other things are good. Sure, it, it is actually kind of fun. It's an exclusive tank. It's rare. It did come with six equipment slots unlocked, so I was pleasantly surprised about that. And it also has a very, very strong turret. It's like T62A status just about with a strong turret there. So... The cons for it is it has a very mediocre performance. If you think it's going to be one of these overpower tanks, no. Tier for tier, the M60 is better because the M60 is really just an improved M48 in very slight ways. It has an extra degree of gun depression and some other things. Um, this tank is really not superior to its counterparts really in any way but alpha damage. Like the T62A, for example. 
it only has a little bit more alpha damage to it but uh, the penetration i'm um, just a lot of things which we'll get to more here in a minute but the gun is really what's lacking in this thing it, it, the gun the gun is the stb one's gun it's literally identical to the stb one look at that that should have penetrated. I have the side of a Jagdpanzer E100. That should have penetrated. This tank lacks accuracy. It's only like 0.32 accuracy. Which, I mean, listen, in the mid-tiers it sounds good, but this is not a tier 10 gun on this. I'm trying to, to kill this Jagdpanzer. I'm switching to heat and he's side on to me and look at that. It still bounces. Like, you gotta be kidding me. This thing's a tier 10 gun. Uh, if you have not watched my STB1 video, I'm gonna put that up at the end. Watch the STB1 video, even though you if you don't have it, because it's gonna demonstrate how kind of bad the gun is. Like I had the back of that of that Soviet tank destroyer that has no armor, it still bounced. I just shot the mouse complete 90 degree angle side on on his turret it bounced still there's no reason for those to bounce it's absolutely ridiculous i went through the drive wheel on that one on the on the, the is7 and i finally got a, a a shot to sink and a leo pta yeah i'm surprised i didn't bounce that on a leo but the gun is is really disappointing to be honest the, the, this definitely i think is the worst part about the uh the tank is the gun it has low pen at 145 and it only has okay gun handling and then it has an okay high speed that that's pretty pretty solid the top speed but the how you get to that top speed is very slow it's very sluggish with the acceleration so that's some of the basic pros and cons of the tank i'm going to move into gameplay and i'm going to uh just elaborate a little bit on on what i think of the tank during that if i had to compare it to another tank it would really be the stb1 the difference is the stb1 has 10 degrees of gun depression this thing only has five which that's not a good trade five degrees of gun depression is really an issue on a lot of different things like look at that wow how did that accuracy get like that and why didn't it pen um, was it a little bit of lag or what but I get shots like that pretty frequent frequently with this tank so the gun is is not accurate at all it does have good turret armor and it has a pretty good for upper front plate but if you get over aggressive in it you're gonna get you're gonna get killed guys you, you will get everybody wants to kill you because you're driving this tank everyone's gonna call you a wallet warrior in fact several times oftentimes at the beginning of my battles i'll say you know my first tier 10 tank and it's funny getting some of the reactions we do <laughs> i get i get raged at from my teammates then like what in the world you noob wallet warrior i mean people you know that and, th and that's them being nice but sometimes i'll just say that at the beginning of a battle and this just for fun so i guess that's a pro about it to you you can have you can have fun with it um but the tank is very mediocre you can't be overly aggressive with it it doesn't have excellent armor like an e50m or anything look at those credits i lost credits on that 3598 damage um the credits it, it may look like it's in gold it looks like a premium but it's really it's really not it does not have enriched credits and look at those shots i sh shot 18 18 of them hit and only 11 of them penned that's seven out of 18. That is a, like, what is that? Like a 40% bounce rate? That's ridiculous. None of those should have bounced. All, everything I was shooting at, I don't think I shot any shots at a tank that was red. Like, all the armor said that I should have penned. But I, I bounced seven of them in that. That is unacceptable for tier 10. That is not a tier 10 gun on this thing. The STB-1's gun is the same thing as this gun. It even looks identical. It's literally put on there, you know. Um, the only difference is, like I said, it's uh, it only has 5 degrees of gun depression, not 10. But the gun is really what makes it un un unacceptable, in my opinion. Especially for the money, guys. I mean, you combine only very mediocre performance, and I mean very mediocre. In fact, I on, on a scale of 5 out of 10, uh, I would give this about a 4.5. I, I really would. Now, it still can be fun because the exclusive but look at that that should have went in this is not a tier 10 gun it's just not i get a bounce from the leo there the leo starts and i'm trying to look it was a 350 bounce so i was looking at the team and then the leo pops up so i want to prioritize that leo he has low low armor and he's already down um, some hit points so i want to try to climb this hill right here and see if i can get the top of his turret and i want to just try to test out the gun but it's not going to let me uh give that chance there so uh, aside from the the 245 penetration which is very low 
the aim time is not as fast as the regular 121 either so that's kind of a bummer also i was really hoping for it to be like a crazy fast aim time it's not it's a very regular aim time on here so i think this 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 tank needs uh some penetration to be honest. i think it needs some penetration and maybe some accuracy or something but it really does struggle for those reasons it still can be a fun tank it's actually a really good face hugger i have face hugged is7 bounced probably two out of three shots with this against good players too against a real good player um so you can you can't in the right circumstance you can be very aggressive with it and have a lot of fun with it i'm not saying it's not a fun tank i do think it's a fun tank all right now this is without the vertical stabilizer also this is only with the first six equipment slots going um but i was a little bit too aggressive and i took one from the fosh and i'm going to wait for the object 704 all right he's shot so i know i can probably sink two into him before he sinks one into me so there's one and then he's gonna follow that is7 it looks like so i, I back up and it looks like he was gonna turn but he turns back towards me so i'm gonna sneak another one in and let the is7 finish him off and i am low health right now and i see that they have three tanks it's three against five right now so we have a two tank advantage however all three of their tanks are really full health so many a times I, I've went forward and my team has went forward and really gotten smoked because they have good armor and full health and, and excellent guns. So I'm going to stay back. They've already killed one of them. We're only up by one tank. I have shots on them. There's really no need to go forward at this point. I hit the adrenaline, uh, but you know they, they get to cover. The DPM of this tank is okay, 3156, which, listen, 3156, it sounds like pretty good DPM, right? But like I said, it, it's hard to be effective with a DPM because the lack of penetration and lack of accuracy really hurt. In a perfect world, it has 3156 DPM, um, but we don't live in a perfect world. This is a fallen world, all right? And the gun will reflect that because you're not going to pen every single thing, every single shot in the battle that you shoot. Uh, shooting on the move, it's pretty solid at. It's not excellent, but it is pretty solid, and it's a whole lot of fun. But it's definitely a medium play style. Uh, if I could compare it to anything, it would be, it kind of reminds me of two tanks. It reminds me of a T-54 at tier 10, and it also reminds me of a Type 59 at tier 10 because you, you have to be patient with them. Um, yeah. more Maybe more along the lines of the T-54 because of the lack of gun depression. So we did 46.75 in that one. And look at that, for an ace tanker, three kills, bring home credits, 11,908. Like you can make that in tier three, dude. That's, that's nothing. So if you think this is a credit grinder, you're wrong. It's not at all. Uh, it can be a fun tank. I'm not sorry that I have it because I really got it for you guys. I wanted to just give you guys an inside scoop on the tank here. And I think it's reflecting that not that many people have it because it's such an easy ace. Tier 10, only 1,240 hit points, or I'm sorry, 1,240 XP got the ace tanker there. So it's a very easy ace right now. So it, it's, a, it's, it's a fun tank, though. I know I said a lot of negative about it. Is it a fun tank? Yes. But is it worth it given the conditions that we're forced to, uh, to endure to obtain it? No. It's not worth it in any means. This should, this should belong in the shop for maybe $35, you know, maybe $40, all right? Uh, it, it would be fun. A lot of people would buy it. Hey, it's cool, you know. But $90 bucks for a 50% chance, you got to be kidding me. Uh, just just don't do it guys it, it's not close to worth it so don't forget to like and subscribe this is eric18989 if you're interested in sponsoring the channel go ahead and click the link down there and have a good one guys